Hello, once again, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to our virtual classroom. Uh, today, we are going over lesson 28-2 uh, and 28-1. 28-2 and 29-1, rather. Uh, these two lessons are very similar, or rather they deal with two things that deal very closely with one another, uh, and that is median and range, median and range. Uh, just as a heads up, if you do go to OneNote, if you do go to OneNote, you will note that under four and nine weeks work, there are two different sections for this. There's 28-2 median and 29-1 range. However, there's only one section for the work here. You will put the work for both of these. Um, so let's go ahead and begin with 28-2. Firstly, looking at the notes. Uh, I do recommend that you pause this video uh, and copy everything down if you haven't done so already. That way, that as I am explaining what you're looking at, you're able to simply pay attention and annotate it as you go along. Moving on, when we're talking about the median, firstly, talking about the median. Notice how the word median sounds a lot like the word medium. That's because they share the same root, both meaning the middle, the middle. So not the highest, not the lowest, but the middle. So median refers to the values in the middle of a distribution. For example, down here we have this distribution of nine values, four, six, five, zero, seven, three, four, six, and five. I know some of those repeat, that's fine. Oftentimes in a distribution values will repeat. But the median will be the value in the middle once you organize the values from least to greatest. So the values must be organized from least to greatest. So let us go ahead and do that first. And as you're doing this, ladies and gentlemen, it helps to have the list of values written in your notebook, or you can just have them on OneNote and cross them out as you go. Find the least value, which in this case, that is zero. So I'm gonna cross it out and write down zero. Followed by the next one, we don't have a one, we don't have a two, but I do see a three right here. So I cross it out and write down three. Uh, no more threes, do I have any fours? Here's a four, and there's another four. So notice I cross it out, write it down, cross it out, write it down. No more fours, but I do see a five, that is the next value. And I see another five, that is the next value. The next largest value is six, followed by another six, and finally we have seven. Notice how I have the same number of values. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I should have nine down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a way that you can uh, check to see, obviously, if you're missing a value, you have one more, then you did something wrong. Be very careful in this process, guys. If you do miss a value or you add a value, the whole thing may be wrong. All right. So again, the median will be the one in the middle. I find that pairing them up is the easiest way to find the one in the middle. Obviously, I already have that here for you. But whenever you have a data set, uh, especially if it's longer, just pair up, pair them up. The first one with the last one the next first one with the next last one, so on and so forth until you no longer have a pair. So right here, five is the median. It does not have a pair. Notice how we have the same number of values to the right and to the left of it. Five is the one in the middle. That is the median. So the median will tell you the point about which all the other points will be around. So median is the one in the middle. Now, in this data set, it, it is obvious that five is the one in the middle. However, what if we had an even number of numbers here? So right here we have nine, that is an odd number, meaning there's always gonna be one left over in this case, that being five. But if we have two values in the middle, uh, and what I mean by that is precisely this, let's suppose that we had an extra number. I know that we don't, but let's suppose that we had an extra zero. And for this, you don't have to write this down, you can just listen. So now we have 10 values as opposed to nine. So I organize them from least to greatest. And notice what happens when I try to figure out which one is in the middle. So I'm gonna pair them up, zero, seven, zero, six, three, and six, four, and five. And notice how we still have two values left. There's not gonna be one left over in the middle. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if there are two values left over, we are going to get the average of those two numbers, meaning just like we did average yesterday, we're going to add the two values and then divide by two. Yeah, we add two values, four and five. So four plus five is nine. And then we're going to divide by two since we added two values together. Nine divided by two will give us four and a half or 4.5. Ladies and gentlemen, the median in this case will be 4.5 if we have two values, these two values left over in the middle. So again, if we have an odd number of values, it's just the one in the middle, the one that doesn't have a pair. But if we have an even number of values, you're going to have two values in the middle. Notice how you're going to have the same number of values to the right and to the left of these. You're going to take those two values, add them together, and then divide by two. That is to say we're getting the average. That is how you find the median. Moving on. Mode. Mode, ladies and gentlemen, pause this if you need to, to write this down, means the most. The one that occurs the most often. Uh, there can be multiple modes, by the way. You can have multiple uh, numbers that happen more than once. So, for example, up here, uh, notice how we have one zero, one three. We have two fours, two fives, and two sixes. So, the modes up here, as it is written, would be four, five, and six. There's not any one number that occurs more often than the other ones. We have three numbers uh, all occurring multiple times each happening twice, so the modes be four, five, and six. Now, if you had an extra five, right here, let's just say we had an extra five, then you would have three fives, so five would be the most. So again, it's not the highest number, not the maximum, but the one that occurs the most often. If we have several zeros, so if you had four zeros right here, then zero would be the most, so zero would be the mode. Finally, let's look at range. Range, ladies and gentlemen, is the difference between the maximum number and the minimum number. And difference does mean subtraction. So we're gonna subtract the minimum from the maximum. We're gonna have the maximum number, which in this data set is seven and subtract the least number, which in this case is zero. Seven minus zero is seven. That is my range. That shows you the distance um, and the spread between the least value and the maximum value. Uh, and so that is range, pretty simple. So with that in mind, let's go into the actual assignment. Let's go into the actual assignment. Uh, going into 28-2. 28 Good afternoon, Tornado. Please pardon this interruption for afternoon announcement. Teachers, this first one is for you. Please do not release students early before the bell. Please wait till the bell to release students. There's a lot of students in the hallway or outside that should not be there. The bell has not rung yet and you need to keep them till the bell rings, please. Students with the following students, please come down to pick up an item from the front office. El Mundo Salazar, Zoe Baca, William Schulten, Andrew Young, and Carrie Young. That's it for this afternoon. Tornadoes have a terrific day. All right. Sorry for that interruption. Let's continue. Number four, 28 uh, dash two. We're going to be doing numbers one, two, and then seven and eight. One, two, seven, and eight. Notice how for the first one, all we're doing is we are getting the, we're using these values right here, these values right here, and we're going to get the median. All right, so for number one, we're gonna organize them from least to greatest. So go ahead, and I recommend that you go one at a time, starting with the least value, which happens to be 18. So we're gonna go 18. All right, any other 18s? No, so there's a 19. Uh, and this is for number one, followed by 20, and there's only one 20. But I do see a 21 here. I do see another 21 here. I see a 22, another 22 another 22, so obviously 22 is happening more often than any of the ones that would be the mode. Not that that's the answer, but just so that you see, a 24 and a 41. So in this swim team, we have 10 people, and these are the ages of those 10 people, and I've just organized their ages from least to greatest. That is what we do for number one. By the way, on Schoology, if you notice, you are putting them in order from least to greatest. So 18, 19, followed by 20, um, and then you would have 21, 21, 22, 22, 22, 24, and 
41. If you miss one of these, the whole thing will be wrong. So for number two, now we want to get the actual median. Median. So again, guys, I recommend you just pair them up. So 18 with 41, 19 with 24, 20 with 22, 21 with 22, and finally I have the two in the middle. There's two because there's an even number of, of values here. So 21 and 22, since there's no clear median, I'm gonna add those two, 21 plus 22, to get the average. So 22 plus one is three, two plus two is four, so it's 43. And now I'm gonna divide by two because I added two values together. 43 divided by two is going to give me Two goes into three once, sorry. Two times one is two. Remainder one, decimal, bring down the zero. Two goes into 10 five times, so I would be 21.5. Ladies and gentlemen, the median is 21.5. Notice how that is between 21 and 22. If you get a median and it is not between those two numbers, you did something wrong. So the answer to two would be 21.5. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I put them in order from these two greatest. And then I saw the numbers in the middle. There happened to be two of them. I had them together, divide by two. That gave me the median. Moving on to number seven. Moving on to number seven. Notice how this time this data set is uh, 23 students in the classroom, and these represent their heights. This represents their heights. So let's go ahead and order these from these two greatest. However, notice how they also provide you with a dot plot down here, which actually makes it a lot easier to put these in order from these two greatest because instead of following the numbers and crossing them out, I can just look at the dots and mark them right here. For example, the, the least value is right here, which is 53, followed by 154. Oh my God. Oh, gentlemen, give me one second. Uh, give me like three minutes. I'll be right there. Can you guys wait outside? Thank you. I'll be right there. I'll be right there. Ah, uh, sorry about that. And so, et cetera, guys. And so you're gonna put these in order and you're gonna do that to find the median value, all right? So there is gonna be one value there in the middle. After you do that, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll just give this to you. They also want you to find the mean and I'll just go ahead and give that to you, the point of balance, which is adding all of these together, which will give you 1,316. Divide that by 23 which would give you 57.2, uh, 57.2. That is, that is the mean, not the median, that is the mean, which again, you need for number eight on this lesson, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I want you to compare that to the median and notice how this distribution is very symmetrical. So you would expect the point of balance, the mean to be very similar to the median simply because it is symmetrical, ladies and gentlemen. All right, uh, so I'm gonna make another video to go over 29-1, but this is it for 28-2. Hopefully you found that helpful. Um, please be very careful as you putting these answers into um, the uh, number seven because you are gonna organize them from least to greatest. If you miss one, it will mark the whole thing on, so do be very careful with that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you in the next video.